do now. I like to do these lives so I don't have to upload them. <laughs> All righty. We will fade in. I'm getting pretty good at this. Welcome, gang, to the 74th, maybe, or third episode of High Drop. And we are joined by none other than Howard Palmer, Jamaican-born self-care and wellness advocate who uses mindful movement to inspire and instruct busy families to prioritize calm, intentional daily actions. Having survived two open heart surgeries, holy shit, I'm reading this for the first time, (laughs) two open heart surgeries as a child and experiencing the death of a close friend in my childhood physical rehab, excuse, excuse me, in my childhood physical rehab center, I began, and this is not I, Howard began his journey to inner peace far before adulthood. Later in life, as an engineer, a stuntman, a father, and a man who is si- has a side investment or two going. Maybe there's almost a wink right there, but it's not, <laughs> it's not actually in the text. He knows firsthand the challenges of navigating an outer life while trying to maintain a peaceful inner life. Today, his personal practice includes parkour, climbing, meditation, yoga, music, plants as medicine, and love as his religion i love that man it's beautiful well put (laughs) together thank you intentional with your words in there i can i can see it yeah i appreciate it man thank you thank you very much man i'm i'm excited to be here i love what you do on this whole idea of high drop and um i don't know man i'm just feeling real grateful to be here because it feels like a whole wave of balancing and balancement if that's a word but Mm -hmm. coming togetherness of something you know Mm -hmm. and um i can only feel so fortunate to be here that's it that's it thank you thank you for having me thank you for being here man i feel really grateful to be here with you yeah you've had some really great people on here so (laughs) (laughs) i have man i've been like i've been so blessed and like it's it's really hard to even maintain that perspective sometimes because it's really important though it's one of the things that keeps you going is actually just being grateful for all the things that you know i needed to take you know if you haven't noticed i've been kind of absent yeah 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 for some yeah, things yeah. and yep. partly is it's me learning and really learning to be appreciative of what's going on yeah, in my life well. because i realized that i wasn't to an extent <laughs> you know like i i was taking things for granted in in, in certain areas um i can understand and generally that. even so it's it's important to kind of like for me it was at least to to take a breath and just to, you know, if you if you put your head underwater, you appreciate oxygen a little bit more. If you <laughs> hold your breath a little bit, you can just understand like how good it is to breathe. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. Um, no, it's adversity builds, you know, builds for great character or something like that. It said, mm-hmm. and um, it it tri- it trickles into everything. I mean, like parkour, the whole idea of what we're familiar with together. I mean, there's a lot of times when you're training or even in the beginning of training where you hurt yourself. And I'm sure a lot of us go home and think like, maybe not a lot of us, but when I go to jams and talk with people, I remember the experience or the reality, you know, people are like, sometimes I question if I should be doing this. Like, should I still be training because I keep hurting myself? You know, there are people that hurt themselves the first year into it, like severely, like all the time. That was me. (laughs) And um, it's really I don't know what the word is, but it's really great. I'll just use great. It's really great to see them continue and find their path through it as much as um, if they find a way to to stop because of it. Like, you know what? I learned through parkour that parkour wasn't for me, you know, like uh, but dancing was or this was or that was. So um, I don't know. I think it's great that when we learn through adversity Mm. that we take those take those lessons and make it a wisdom and try to do better next time. 100%. Yeah, yeah, it was I mean they end up being the greatest gifts mm. all the adversity, right? Yep. yep and yep. that's definitely you know, and not to jump onto my story because I want to get into uh, some of the things that we were t- we had a really good conversation before we even started. Sh- yeah, but um <laughs> but uh that just just because it's relevant, that was the best thing that happened to me in a lot of ways with my parkour career is getting really injured mm. early on. And forcing me to actually pay attention to the way I trained. Yeah. Because <clears throat> what happened is I tore my meniscus when I was like 14 snowboarding. Mm. Um, and then I continuously that, that tore hurts. it like over the next few five, six, seven years to the point where, okay, it hadn't happened in a while. But on a random day in parkour training, 
I had actually a really good day of training. Yeah. And I didn't injure it during training, but it was because I was so elated from training. I started click kicking my knee around in a weird way. Mm. And I had a bucket handle tear, had to get the meniscus removed. And then, you know, it was like that come to a decision moment where yeah. I'm just like, okay, am I going to lean in to this injury and like come back stronger or is this not for me? Right. And right, right. definitely it was a struggle I mean, to, meniscus, to figure dude. it out. <laughs> yeah. And you're, and you're my doctors and stuff are saying like, oh, I'm... no, actually parkour didn't even like, you couldn't really explain it yet. It was yeah, like yeah. early on, but you know, <clears throat> and anyway, what it did for me was it showed me just how easily it can be taken away. Yes. Your ability to, to do all these such enjoyable movements. Yes. And literally because I was excited, that's what like, took it away so <laughs> um getting a little bit over celebratory i guess was yeah, partly yeah. like a lesson learned and then also just it just brought me to this point of like okay what do i want why if i'm going to go back to it and i am going to maybe get arthritis at the end of this journey because now i don't have a meniscus yeah that's what i'm saying and i'm going to have like, like these ailments what am what's my training going to be about yeah and that brought me to this point where i was like okay i'm going to really push myself i really want to know i know that's a limited timeline and it crunched everything down so that I honed my training to be very geared towards mastering whatever movements I'm interested in yeah, as fast yeah. and efficiently. Like, you know, it's already fast and efficient discipline, but how much faster can I learn? How much more dis or, um, efficient can I be with my training? To and get how much to more you can connect to that state, you know, and be better in that state? <clears throat> that came later. Okay. <laughs> that came okay. later. That, that came after more injuries. Oh, but um, because that because I mean, I'm I'm one of them folks that is kind of dumb. I have to like trip and fall sometimes really? to learn the real lesson. You know, not uh, every lesson, but so more than I'd like to admit. Okay, okay. So you you're hard headed. <laughs> I don't think I am, but that's because I am for sure. <laughs> okay, right. <laughs> No, my um, I'm uh, my younger sister. I love her. She's we grew up like that. She was always like the hard headed one, and um, but I don't know, man. What do you want to talk about today? What do we want to share well, with the community? <clears throat> I wanted to to kind of ask you about like you were talking about. You know, you're coming from an older perspective, mm. and you have some wisdom. I think in terms of like what it means to, especially like what you were talking about earlier with me is your story of how you kind of had to man up in, in one way to yeah. one term or another, basically is just yeah. to what put you in that position. And then what does that look like? And, and why was it more difficult for you maybe than because of your background? And well, I mean, I guess for parkour, um, where I had to man up in that in instance is, and we're going to say man up, but we know that it's woman up. Yeah, woman no, up. it's human up. How about that? Person human up. up. Yeah, all that stuff. Human up, person up, you know, like um, step into your greater self. How about that? But more importantly, um, honestly, man. So like when I was a sponsored athlete, and maybe even prior to that, but there was no really manning up to prior to that. When I got asked or got offered or asked to be sponsored and work into those things, I didn't um, and go through the reality of the movies and the examples of the commercials. And just the people that I met, you know, and the people that I got to coach. Um, I don't, that wasn't a man up state for me. The opposite side of what the man up state was living the life I had outside of that. Mm -hmm. Being a father, um, being an engineer, um, being someone who was disciplined enough to have a good enough um, balanced financial life to be able to still compete and go to events and or... Um, create whatever interests I had to on top of the the reality the experience I was having with parkour I never I was introduced to parkour and when I was it felt like something similar to what I was already doing because I was literally doing something similar to parkour when someone asked me about it and mm -hmm. I was like no I've never heard of that you know but um I'll look it up and he's like yeah man you should because it looks like you're doing that <laughs> and this is 26 years old and when I decided by 27 that this was what I wanted to do, everything just happened. Everything just fell into place. So I never really felt like I had to man up. But those things that fell into place, my outside life didn't fall into place mm -hmm. because I didn't necessarily want it to be. Um, can you can you expand on like outside life? Yeah, yeah. Versus inside life. 
So inside life would be the athlete, uh, the sponsored athlete, the, the, the person who competes in events, the person who goes in the name of APK at the time I was with and goes in the name of Take Flight, who I was with at the time, like do things for them. The outside life was um, the engineer. I worked for a, a major telecommunications company and I was one of the um, top guys in the department and I did a lot of work, you know, mm -hmm. I... I did a lot. I was really, 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 um, it was really important to me to have that path and defined it because I created it. No one in my family at that, at that time anyway, had done that much, um, level of work for themselves, you know, finish out school, define a career, um, make something of that and actually be represented in a, in a way where it's like, I can give back to my family. Mm. And so, um, I felt proud of myself. But here it is. Now I'm spawn no, I'm an athlete again. Mm -hmm. And I use those quotes. But what do I do? How do I make it work? And being a father, again, my daughter came in right around that time. So my daughter was born, and then five days later I get the job. Um a month before that, no, two months before that, I'm sponsored and going around doing commercials and all these other so it really happened within three to five months of its time, but it lasted at least five years. And so all in that space, I'm juggling life, reality, relationships. The other thing, too, is I'm I choose to believe that I'm really good on communic big on communication, not good, big mm -hmm. on communication. The idea of trying to find ways to do that to get effective understanding across. But that doesn't mean it always works that way. And with mm -hmm. relationships and me not being the best that I thought I was with, you know, with with parkour, yeah, I can have the same effect in life. No, 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 I can't, you know? And it didn't come that way directly. It more came in reverse. I found parkour as a discipline to get me better, to hone in, to kind of put everything in perspective because of the way I felt it was a mindful expression of myself that when I look at my life, I'm like, all right, well, I need to really study to get this certification um, because it's gonna help me advance my engineering career. So I'm going to go ahead and lay out these six months. And then on top of that, I'm going to make sure I go train in support to these, this studying. So it was kind of like an icing on the cake for me to go out and train because I knew earlier I studied for X amount of hours on, on top of it. So I used that as an exit way to get better instead of going out and possibly drinking or hanging out with friends or um, you know doing stuff I may not want to do, but it's, it's quote unquote feels good because it's, it's me relaxing. Parkour yeah. was my way of relaxing. Mm. And so my outside life was that, was me trying to get better or trying to find ways to hold control of the path of being, again, an engineer, a father, an artist, because I did a lot with my music back then too. Um, it trickled into parkour because of what I did now. And I'm really um, happy and fortunate that for what I've done with my discipline of music and parkour, hasn't been done yet but it's because that's what parkour is like to me a platform to create all these things that still have maybe generations before they get appreciated appreciated or understood because it's such a full mind and body expression yeah you know yeah um but uh <clears throat> i don't know that's that was my outside life it was a juggle it was um a, a way for me to it was hard, but I used the discipline of parkour and the idea of being mindful in my flow to get better with life. Mm -hmm. I didn't I didn't follow the crowd when people were like doing flips and doing um, certain styles of movement. I, I mean, I learned my basics flips, my front and back, you know, <laughs> but it took me at least seven years to get my side flip. Not because I couldn't. I've, I was doing other moves that felt like if you were doing that, you should be able to do a side flip. But again, for me, it was the mind, mind, mind state and mindset because I wanted my flow to be exactly the way I thought. So if I didn't think I could do a side flip in there, I'm not going to do it, whether I can physically do it or not. But if I know I can do a punch front pre, I'm going to do it. Or maybe not a pre, a punch front period, mm -hmm. then I'm going to do it. You know, so, but um, that's the way it felt for me. Yeah. So yeah. it was it was like a, a place where you could actualize like your visions, it kinda sounds like. Yep. Yep. And yep. Um, yep. and how I guess like also what I'm curious about is just 
you know, we kind of talked about there's like this before and after this stage of mm. when, okay, you had all these things going and you were sponsored and, and things shift when you all of a sudden, okay, now you have a baby on the way. Mm -hmm. And I'm guess like, how, how did you evolve? I, I would ask with, with, through trial and error, buddy. Through trial no. and error, yeah. <laughs> no, no, like it's really that real. I mean, it doesn't, I don't feel like um, whether my story is the same or similar or different. For me, it was just honestly through trial and error. Like I looked at, um, again, so when the whole height of my athletic life was coming downwards mm -hmm. um, and, you know, the, the, the lights were being turned off and the curtain was being closed or whatever, I never stopped. I never felt like I needed to stop training mm. or discipline myself enough to evolve and have fun with it. I did feel like there was more I could have and wanted to do with the attention and the environment and, and the people that I was around. But um, that to me, it felt like that's going to happen again. Or if it does, it's going to happen in a greater format, you mm. know, so. I learned how to get quiet with just being simple with my flow and accepting that I can do a Kong 30 times and be okay over a span of an hour and I'll be okay with that. Let's mm -hmm. go home. I won't. And, and I might just record that and that might be a three minute video on my YouTube of me just doing a Kong <laughs> for an hour in time lapse. You know, like I get, <laughs> you know, I play with it too, but I don't get like caught up in, not being somewhere I wasn't or should be because the experience kind of came to me and I worked through it and enjoyed it and took advantage of certain aspects. But for where I could have done better and I lost that opportunity, in my opinion, I didn't get um, too beside myself about it more than like, OK, well, I learned. Mm -hmm. And if it comes back around again, then let's do this this time. Yeah. And what What would you do? I guess this, mm. this time, well, it, that this it's, it's kind of, it's kind of what I'm doing now. Lessons. Yeah. Yeah. Being, that's what I want to dive into. Mostly. Be, being here with you, like, um, my meditation, I'll speak on that because that's like my, my biggest discipline behind all that I do again, as an artist and an athlete, um, as a father, you know, as, as an engineer, as a person who looks to express themselves through their emotions creatively, um, Medita being still, but not just physically still, being mentally still is the thing, is the this, is what, mm -hmm. I, is what I focus on. And I call it a sense of mindfulness because, again, of all those aspects that I am interested in and do so well because of my discipline and consistency in them, I have to learn to be silent. I have to sometimes learn to look at myself in it, but not the self that I call or we call the I or the ego, but the self that is doing the action. A lot of what we experience, especially you as a, you know, as a top athlete, you envision yourself in the flow. You, 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 when you're doing um, competitions, you don't get a lot of time to train on the, on the, um, on the, on the obstacles. Mm -hmm. So you kind of have to like envision what it looks like for you to do the move or pretend you know, what your flow is gonna look like. That is a sense of mindfulness in my opinion. Because you're taking yourself out, you're taking the self out of yourself and, and, and kind of looking at it externally, you know? You're not judging it, you're just looking at it and then you're creating it. So mm -hmm. that's what I did and that's what I got really good at. Mm -hmm. But in the sense of um, learning from my mistakes, that's the trial and error. Because there were a lot of times where I felt, well, you know what, no, I'm going to train for the next six months or the next two months or whatever every day or every other day but then where like my relationship would sacrifice and then i'm like well that's not smart because <laughs> you want this relationship <laughs> so why are you out here training you know and then if it's if let's say um i'm not with someone who's interested in me training like helping me out in that way um for whatever that means i still want to train so i have to find a way to balance Mm -hmm. And the best way to balance is first find a still point. Where's the, you know, the most controlled point of it all. Mm -hmm. And for me to get there is to go inwards and get silent, you know, be the eye of the storm kind of deal. Um, but that was natural. 
I unfortunately, and I don't know if this is the platform, but it's mm -hmm. part in part with the conversation. I've had like some trauma in my life growing up that I guess you read about it, the two open heart surgeries, you know, that and my best friend dying at an early age, like not knowing how to um, get through that. I still hung on to certain, if not a lot of it until I was able to get through that. You know, and that might have trickled into my like my 20s and my 30s. And I'm like, dude, I'm still holding on to this thing. But if you never got right with it, then it's never going to go anywhere. So that idea, again, of being mindful and, you know, how, can I ask you? Yeah. How, how did yeah. you get right with it, these things? Well, or what did you discover? Like when when did it become? I mean, I think all this is so powerful, like the stillness. I want to get into that, too. But yeah. Let's put a pin in that for a second. Yeah. How did I get what, what right with it? Yeah, it's I'm still doing that, man. Um, I pick I pick my battles mm. if it's like, again, back to training and can't be able to train as I want to or because of life. Not necessarily. There's no physical hindrance. Mm. But now I have a job or now I have a life I want to live, you know, so I can't train Monday through Friday, nine to nine, <laughs> you know, um, but. You just do it. I, I don't. It, it's really a trial and error thing. You 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 make a yeah. decision. You can break something down. Well, like, go ahead. Sorry, it seems like, but it seems like you did like uh, let go of something that you were holding on to. Ah, uh, like that's what it sounded like to me. If, correct me if I'm wrong. That help you free up some of this. Like in the stillness, mm, it seems like you yeah. realize like that there is a something that you could let go of. I guess I let go of my fear of it. Mm. My fear of losing or controlling anything. Mm. You know, just being there in the stillness of it all or the acceptance of it all was key. You know, I was definitely and still am um, an emotional person, but expressing myself in anger wasn't my 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 strongest, you know, suit, you know, my my best version of myself. Yeah. So I got to get right with that. And then all the things that made me when I'm angry, all the things that I affected in that way, again, relationship, life experience, jobs. You know, it wasn't good. So I had to had to put a pin in that, you know, I had to mm -hmm. stop that and get right with that is like, listen, you can keep doing it and keep getting hurt or you can and keep hurting others, you know, or feel like you are or whatever the case may be. Or you can stop it right now. Mm -hmm. And again, back to parkour, the jump will always be there. So you can be like, oh, I'm going to shit. I'm going to knee. Oh I'm going to face. I'm going <clears> to <throat> or you can jump. You know, you can put some realities behind it, some support, some things that'll make it better. And then you can go for the jump um, or go for the move. I like the word jump because it's so, again, mind and body connection. Mm -hmm. um, but it's not going anywhere. Only you are. Right. And you can do it or you can't. And again, in my life, I was like, I can be s not sorry for myself, but like I can be sad about what is not. Or I can accept that is what is not is not and then move forward with what is being appreciative of my moment and accepting less. Like I said in the beginning of this, it's just gratitude, man, because I really loved the idea of what you were doing with this podcast. And I'm like, man, I wish I could team up with him and we do like a, a duo podcast, <laughs> man. We just tag team these people because it's really important for the mindset of the style of trace or even though we use the word athlete, I'm going to use trace or in parkour mm. um, and free running to especially at this level today um, that the mind behind the individual is really important to me right now than just like what they're doing. And especially especially men and women, but even the women, because um, they're getting so athletically confident, you know, and competing with whether with themselves or just in competitions, but just that. And to me, that's that that took long enough. But God, I'm really happy it's here now, you mm -hmm. know, and where dudes like David Nims, I think that's how you pronounce Nims. his name. Nims. Is it um, Nims? I don't know. Yeah. David, I'm sorry. I love you. Um, mm -hmm. But to me, watching him grow up through it and being a part of like uh, this this crew of um they used to do these parkour videos where it's like guerrilla style. Um, what's it called, Police man? Boys? Yes. Yeah, oh, man. <laughs> I have to pause for a second. I <laughs> really, really, really feel those videos yeah, because it, re hot. it reminded me of um, parkour originals, you know, mm -hmm. the, the original ones with that guy. Um, 
the guy that used to rap, the French guy, he still probably does now. Um, but just the idea of getting there with it and finding that level of confidence and consistency, regardless of what um, might be the norm and, and, and falling in love with that and then still being able to do that long enough to where now, like, he's really good at speed runs. Totally. Yeah. And I would only assume it's doing stuff like that in those videos that really got him in and the mindset behind what got him behind that. But we, I don't know that. There's no video well, that's or audio. That's so fascinating mm -hmm. about competition. Mm -hmm. Forgive me for cutting you off. But no, no, no like, let's talk. I, I've always like been interested in the way that competition sort of has its own domain and it mm. is creative inside it, but it ultimately, I think, must be oriented around what happens outside of competition. Yeah. Because that is the, <clears throat> that's sort of the barometer. That's sort mm -hmm. of like where the movement actually is the most innovative. Mm -hmm. And what's wild though, is that you'll get, you'll get it now on both ends. I think in, at, Whereas in competition, you might see something that's never been seen in the streets. Yeah, like a double now. side pre. Mm -hmm. But, but what? The double side like pre. Like the double from, side yeah, pre, yeah, exactly. Yeah. At NAPC, that was fucking nuts. And, mm -hmm. and yeah, I mean, all, all to say that, like, I still think that kind of the competition is always going to, it's always going to be the, the lab. Yeah. Um, yeah. Or, or excuse me. The the lab is actually going to be the outside ground. of competition. Mm. The the competition is going to be kind of like an ex. Damn, they're both too way too close. The science experiments analogies. But I would say that what fascinates me about it is mm. that I don't really know. Like, and and that's where things get creepy is if they start to diverge, and all of a sudden someone who's training in the streets not creepy, but just that's what some some eventually it's going to probably be like is. Mm you're going to specialize in, in speed runs. Yeah, I see. And you're, you're going to specialize in, Yeah, you know, that's where competition will take it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's, <laughs> but that's I guess that's the sadness of it, you know, but that's but, why we are creatures of habit and conditions to, to a point, you know. And, then, and that's also, but th that's also like, I'm not sure that you will be able to compete still. It, you, you know, we don't know. We don't really know. Like, I don't really know and I don't really need to know, but I think what's interesting is that we don't know. That's all. Because it could be that the best parkour athletes in the world still end up being in these competitions. Right. And driving the competition dialogue. Right. Or it could be that you kind of get this split where it's speed or free running or whatever kind of like competition athletes. Yeah. And then there's the street video making right. side of it. And maybe it's kind of maybe competition becomes a breeding ground and you kind of like that's where you make a name for yourself that's kind of like a way for athletes to get some accolades get some momentum going well i don't think really he, push themselves test themselves and yeah. then they then they take that as a springboard to something else well that's um, what I i'm getting at anywhere that's what i'm getting at yeah. i think it i think to use david again as the example in the conversation from that whole leads boys to the example of what he's given now. These again could just be examples of where he's on to next, you know, which may not even correlate as easy as that is in this conversation. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, and again, he's again to use him. And then the last example is that he's, he's really great with the camera, you know? So it's being able to understand, like there's an aspect in the mind that's happening with specifically people in our community that, to me has yet to be spoken directly about and it could be again an overall idea of mindfulness but it is an overall reality that the person has to learn how to get so comfortable inward to do certain things mm. you know i think pasha is probably like really great at knowing himself because he shows that way maybe not like i know what i want to do with my life but like his body mm -hmm. and to be aware of your body there's a no matter who you are, there's a lot of breath work in that. You know, you know, I got to breathe. You got to breathe. You got to listen. When we do a jump again or a move, we take that one deep breath. Everybody does that. Everybody's a, even before you're about to compete. You ready? Three, two. Right. Everybody. So you don't Super forget. Important. You don't forget to breathe. And if you did, 
then you die, right? Mm -hmm. So it's being able to understand there's a subconscious reality that you can tap into that in the example of some of these guys' performance and maybe their their the 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 mindset behind their performance that is yet to be spoken about in my I don't know in my opinion I haven't what really do you think heard is it. it not being spoken about just like sitting down with them and just you know getting behind their mind to be mm -hmm. like okay what and and again it could be so broad because yeah. some, some of them might not be aware that that's what they're doing you know, it could just a be a natural be state, ignorant in, but not ignorant, but like a just yeah, a, a sense of not knowing. Power. Yes, exactly. It, innate like so. There's the physical aspect of it, but the trust behind the physical aspect is the space I'm referring to. How did you, or how do you, or how can you, or how will you get to that space all the time, or get past that space to where now you physically trust yourself? Mm -hmm. And again, it might it be it might be too broad in certain ways, but you can ask like, okay, let's look at this video. This stride, this stride, stride pre-jump you did here, you were the first to do it or the first we seen or you were did it this way. What were you thinking then? Give us five minutes of that conversation. Boom, boom. Mm -hmm. That's what I'm saying because you're, 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 you're talking specific about something that we can all relate to visually and then now you're getting behind the person's mind behind it. And they might not be articulate. They might not know what happened. They might just <laughs> be like, no, I just did it. Physical intelligence and other yeah, intelligence yeah, yeah. Is internal not and mental. Right. They're it not does. mutually exclusive, nope, but no. they ain't. They're not always the same, they basically. Ain't yeah, yeah, correlation. Yeah, yeah. yeah, they could be. They could be continuously exclusive. But mm -hmm. my point is that. And I think that is what helps the younger generation or an even maybe a person like me who gets older, um, who's getting older in life, that the mind and, and how we view ourselves in a loving way or just period is important you know dementia and like you're getting old man. oh I'm, getting, <laughs> I'm talking to myself again sorry i'm getting older so at 40 it's it's not it's not easy to think it's getting easier mm -hmm. or to think that it's gonna get easier mm -hmm. <laughs> but because it's not gonna get easier what do i really prepare for because I can prepare for good health, I can prepare for good physical things, but what if I bump my toe and that causes a chain reaction and I lose my leg? Oh my then God. all those squats were useless. <laughs> useless set of squats, right? Yeah. But I could not bump my toe, again, same example, and go on to be really great at squats at 80. You know, So it's being able to say there's two ways that life can offer it. And the mindfulness, again, the state of it is that, okay, I can do the whole intentional reality thing of, oh, I don't want to bump my toe and I want to be great. Or for me, I can just get right with the space that, you know what, that's funny to think about. So <laughs> it's good to think that I can be that old and probably find something that funny, you know, but let's not walk around with not being aware of where my feet is. So let's work on more jumps. You see, like I relate it to something that can be natural for me versus like something that I'm in a f in, in fear of. That's that's a huge shift to, that's really important to make. Right. And I, I think that's something I talked about recently on mm -hmm. my Instagram. But um, I think that's powerful. Yeah. Like you don't really want to be acting out of fear. No, in, in general, again, in your life. I mean, parkour is pretty scary. <laughs> this is advice. First of all, it's unsolicited, but also yes, you're we're not you have the freedom to turn pause or off at mm -hmm. any moment. So, but and also it's coming from somebody who doesn't. I don't think I know even the first thing about these things. Yeah. But I think what I'm understanding is that it's working for me. Yeah. To like, and it's <clears throat> it wouldn't be so ubiquitous if people didn't want to get rid of fear, right? Yeah. But you see it all the time, and you see all these mindful um, speakers and other athletes out there talking about these things and that is a message that we're picking up on and it is a powerful message just being like recycled and uh amplified yeah throughout the just the entire conversation of the whole human race right now yeah. it's just like yeah. we are trying to stop acting in a way out of and that's why i think parkour has become a really powerful and huge everything connects um, dude everything connects it's 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 you know, I don't know what you believe, and I don't really mm. have a theory on this, but I think I don't believe much conscious no, or like <laughs> the, like the, as humans mm. are ready for something like parkour. That's when it comes along, right? Yeah, yeah, you yeah. Know, yeah like, yeah. and we're ready to to deal with physical fear. In when a way the student that, is ready, the teacher um, will. And that's arrive. not to say that parkour is the fucking thing. Like, obviously, there's 
you know, who's posh is Buster Keaton. Yeah. Yeah. There's, yeah, yeah. there's, there's been thousands of years of people doing yeah. gnarly shit, yeah. but for whatever reason now, the entire population of earth is on some level, you know, I don't know what percentage of people on right. the planet are doing parkour or moving or kind of thinking about it, fears and how to overcome and be more mindful and mm. like be expressing themselves uh, in a way that, well, what I see is, is um, in fear. There's a there's a connection. Ever, it feels like there's a connection for me in um, like networking and computers. There's this model called the OSI model, and from the bottom up to the top, um, the first layer is the physical layer, right? And then the next layer is something called the data link layer, and the next layer is a networking layer, and blah blah blah. The physical layer is as it sounds, right? You have to understand what hardware you're associating with and what you can do to network it which is the next layer to connect it right mm -hmm. into the system um or i'm sorry the data link layer how do you connect that data and then you network that data so in a correlation to men or to humans as to where we are now to what i'm understanding from your example it's like we are at the physical layer and we're working mm -hmm. to link those data our data communications the way we communicate there's mm -hmm. so many mediums that we communicate on right now that um the saturation of it is the biggest thing we need to consider, you know, like we, we almost might lose ourselves in too much communication, you know, <laughs> creating an, creating a avatar of yourself is that biggest example for me. Mm. Like you want to communicate so hard that you want to communicate in a version of communication. Like, you know, you want to become that and that's cool. I'm down with it. But, um, where, where I stand in difference with it is that it takes away again, from you 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 now think speaking for myself i would now think that there's a extension of me that's better mm. versus me being just me and extending that betterment through me not just being a version that's better you yeah. know um i don't know that's how i look at it i think that's why when we do communicate like in the example of mindfulness and using this platform of height drop to talk about even more than just the movement that it connects us back you know you can't have a shitty job and then expect to get real mindful in meditation or get real connected with yourself it all connects you know and and some of us are in jobs that we don't prefer and i definitely was in that space before but I don't mean like the job. I mean like your mind state about the fucking job, you know, mm -hmm. like why are you there? And if you really want to do it so that you can get better in your version of yourself now. Right. So many analogies, so many ways we can look at it. We are vibrational beings. We all live in the sense of sound, you know, like. So what, what if if that's the case, we're not really here. All these different <laughs> yeah, things, like, yeah. all these but, fundamental like, yeah, the ways it, you can expand it basically that brings it back down to earth and something we can connect to that communication and our attention to it is what is key mm -hmm. how we focus on how we focus like learning is a skill it's you, not everybody knows how to learn you know like you have to learn how to learn so um i don't know not everybody can parkour you learn how to parkour or you don't <laughs> it's not for everybody it's yeah no mm. not everyone can experience it through yeah. the physical and yeah and There's I levels. Think stillness mm -hmm. is like really important. Like that's one of the things that I think it brought both of us into that space mm. of, you know, not to say I'm like there and I'm not meditating on a daily practice or anything right, right. now. Like I, I want to introduce it as naturally as, as I can, but it is good. It's good. inspiring to me to, to hear that people have a daily practice. And that's the way it came for me. I didn't like, all right, I'm going to meditate from now and forever. No, it was like, it came from wanting to heal myself. Yeah, well, and, yeah. and finding stillness is so powerful, like you were saying earlier, I think. Mm -hmm. with Because if there is anything, if there is anything that needs healing, it sometimes is so quiet, you know? Communication's not always about yeah. speaking. Yeah. It's, for me, and this is one of the biggest things, is I need... I need so much more work on listening than I do on, <laughs> on, on communicating. On talking out, yeah, talking yeah, yeah. Because that's first of all it's it's should be half at least of, of your yeah experience. Half, half full half empty glass kind of deal yeah and again that stillness will will force you to listen mm -hmm. you know when you're being still what do you how do you talk to yourself how do you 
what are the things that are going inside your mind? What is what's coming up out of the woodwork? And some of that's just clutter and noise and whatever. Here's an example. Prayer is you talking to God. Meditation is you. It's God talking to you. Move. Right. And if that resonates or make any sense. That's what I mean. Like you can get better just by being aware of what feels better. Right. If you want to use meditation as a practice in your life, it's great. to The approach that you said is perfect because it, again, relates back to parkour and disciplining yourself and getting better. And even as an athlete, you didn't force a lot of your getting better in parkour. You just let it come naturally. A lot of when we go out and train often makes us like, oh, I didn't know I could do that. Oh, sh- oh man, I can do that. Oh, man, I'm going to oh, oh, watch this video. And then you start like really getting excited about not knowing what you don't know that you do know you don't know. Mm-hmm. You know, like you're trying mm-hmm. to just get with it. Like, I don't know. I know that, but I do know I know that because I'm doing it. What else can I do? You know, so you start listening to, again, the awareness of what's happening around you or the maybe your body's awareness of what's happening. So, um. I don't know, bro. I think I love this again, this platform. And I think the mindfulness you say you wanted to tap you, into it. Go ahead. Do you feel like your body is like the, the kind of ultimate barometer, but ultimate <laughs> thermometer, ultimate blankometer uh, for measuring your, I mean, it kind of like, this is what I'm starting to, mm-hmm. to theorize and think of is, you know, by stillness and thinking like, If you're listening to the universe, mm. is that also just listening to whatever it is that you are? And like by listening to yourself, mm. are you becoming, cause that's, that's kind of like the way I said my training is like yeah. I, would, I would try to hone in on a feeling and the feeling I was able to hone in on was like, am I ready for this jump or not? Mm. And that became a really specific thing that I can still really use to this day. But do I think Maybe. your body is is that barometer of knowing that sense of self or <clears throat> or knowing that sense of calmness, you know? Yeah, I'm asking. Yeah, I'm suppose I'm asking is just like when you go into mm. that stillness space, are you checking to see like how you feel and where do you like to feel it? Only through the breath. Mm. So like I don't use my body more than I use my awareness of my breath to be aware of where my body is, Mm -hmm. right? I try to keep an external sense of my now because I'm sitting here now, you know, like let's say in meditation, but like, okay, here's an example. Um, There's a difference from sitting at the seashore, right? You can see the waves, but there's a deeper sense of calm because you're pretty calm when you're sitting at the waves, right? But there's a deeper sense of calmness if you're below the waves, if you're in the water looking up at the waves, you know you have to be calmer, right? Mm-hmm. First of all, you might be holding your breath, right? <laughs> but let's say you could breathe down there. The idea is that there's more vastness of the ocean around you and you are now within it, that you see above you the waves. You're below it. It's, you know, it, it's not, you're not experiencing it. You are the wave mm-hmm. because you're in the ocean, right? Mm-hmm. So in that example, in hope to my point, is that you you can be where you want to be based on your awareness of your breath because your body will always be shifting. I come to the state of that, to your question, through my body, that barometer, through my breath. You know, like a metronome, toop, 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 my breath is well, that metronome. that's that relationship with the universe yeah it's like so mysterious in a way right yeah yeah. it's like the breath is like you're inviting molecules into you and then like dude when you see you something and then so like that's like the weird you can get anxiety on a jump again you can get up to a jump and be like dude again would that happen to us recently just when we met up for tara's thing like that stride stride cat leap you know thing that everybody was doing it's like you take a deep breath it looks pretty simple but if you would have slipped it would have really, really sucked because <laughs> that concrete was edgy and sharp. But it doesn't exist in that world if you A, commit, or B, find a way to commit. And so, again, 
the ocean is deep, but as deep as you want to fear it to be, you know, or deep as you want it to be, you know, and the seashore is great and the oceans and the waves are great to be and watch in and be there with. But if you're not there, like hold, holding a moment of stillness in it, how can you really appreciate it? Right. How can you really get better at anything again to parkour related with your discipline if you don't take the time and the space to really know where you are in it? You know, are you following along and making posts and following a reality that just boosts your confidence or are you really trying to get good all around? You know, are you taking days off when you know you're not supposed to? In parkour, we have a thing where we work through the injury. Okay, I don't know any scientific or medical realities of it being right or wrong, but I've done it and I do it, but I do it in moderation and an example of what's best for me, mm -hmm. right? So if I have an injury that I know I shouldn't be training or playing with, I'm just not going to train. I'm at that state enough to be able to make that decision. But let's say when I wasn't at whatever state that could have been, I was running a risk of hurting myself into the future where I couldn't be where I am now in a better place, you know, especially mm -hmm. if I had anxiety about it. And so answering your question again, it's just through the breath, not necessarily through my body, because I could be great and then think, yeah, I'm going to push it, man. Everybody loves me, everybody. And then now I'm like totally messed up and can't even do a ground con. <laughs> you know what I mean? Which might sound simple, but it's still hard. It's still well, hard. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's pretty relatable. You know, mm -hmm. I definitely pushed through injuries in a way that became a a, a wall. You know? Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. I was like, okay, I'm gonna keep pushing and keep holding on you know that's because it's, it's the equivalent of holding your breath mm -hmm. instead of like having a nice flow all of a sudden i'm just like mm, i'm turning red in the face but mm -hmm. basically my body's turning red with inflammation and <laughs> things are going hard in the you know like yeah it's funny you notice when you're not up. breathing yeah yeah, yeah and yeah. and then you you just have to like exhale, exhale completely yeah. and i definitely relate to that you know there's there's but it's a learning process. Like it's not yeah. even you're not you're not always conscious. That's why that yeah. that mindfulness that you're speaking it's about a is journey, so bro. You got to get journey, on the man. journey. You got to get on the bus. Because you don't know that you you're doing some of these it. things until yeah. You do. Well, I mean, which I don't think like I ever. For example, it was like, oh, I'm gonna, I'm doing this because I want like. To whatever i don't know what, what, what was the example the, Just, to, to like, be popular popular yeah. and like it, it's like i wanted yeah, to yeah, i wanted yeah. to push things as far as i could right and the popularity came with it yeah, yeah and yeah you know i wanted to take the journey as far as i could take it you know we talk about this wave analogy and it's oh, like yes. surfing and how you if you're on a wave like it might you might as well be right right in the wave like, yeah. you find yourself <laughs> catching a wave like i think it's a good thing to take advantage and try to ride and and then if that wave comes to shore, get off your board as well, you know, and <laughs> swim back out there and not just like stand on your board on the Imbalanced sand or something and yeah, be yeah. thinking like, or, or, you know, that's, that's one of my favorite analogies, I guess, is just the, the, the riding the because, wave. Yeah. Cause you're riding a wave. You don't really know how long it's going to last. Yeah. And then. I mean, look, the at beauty is trying to find another wave. And surfing is a good the example. Process. Surfing is um, a good example of learning. If you become in love learning. with that wave and just yeah, that wave exactly. and not with the surfing itself, then, yep. then yeah, it can be devastating when the wave ends. But no, you're right. There's always more waves. <laughs> there's always another wave. And yep. if you don't get yep. on your board, this yep. is so cool. In parkour, we, you know, we say the jump. We just said it earlier. Yeah, and there's always another jump. Mm -hmm. You know, you don't have to like get so caught up in it and again if you're at a jam or you're around people and the influence or the environment might be a little bit um intimidating or aggressive or intense you know you got to learn to find your space there you know like maybe you learn there how to find it and i think earlier you were pointing out how the dynamics or the, the um the platform of training can offer a certain level of creativity that's like you don't get from just like performing as an athlete or you don't get from just like um not 
not per, not having fun with it if you form it so rigid you know if you get so get so in your mind about it and not necessarily in the journey of it you might lose that important that important step of even the growth that you might need to get better you know like um i remember topping out at one point or feeling like i topped out like i'm not going to be able to do that double back I'm just not going to be able to do it mm-hmm. do the one half but you know it's not it's not i'm topping out i can't do a double back mm-hmm. you know um what did that really mean and I, it wasn't a, i had to get over the physical aspect of it it's like no i can physically do this that's crazy no 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 you can't there's something about that rotation there's something about your equilibrium there's something about it that you can push through but i'm telling you bro stop <laughs> you know and and getting right with that took a second not too long you know but like once i did it was like okay well dude now i can do like back tucks like nobody's business because the height is already there mm-hmm. you know again appreciating that and now again 39 40 years old going around like i feel like i am i'm really balanced with people that are 25 30 you know in parkour and that discipline of movement you know we see again for our environment apex is so tops for it's in the the environment that we're in physically this air and the idea and then the conditioning that we see the younger generation even now the the current generation that's running it they're still killing it and they're not even trying they're just having fun and taking pictures and videos where you and i and even prior to us we were fucking trying we were really trying to pave a path and really trying to put these things and i'm not saying these guys aren't trying either Mm -hmm. i'm saying the level of their trying has a lot more support and a lot more um, availability to be what it is than before when there was no space for it and no platform for it to be as free as it is now or even accepted as it is now, you know, to express yourself in it and to be yourself in it and not feel like, well, if you're not this good at this, then nobody's going to look at you. You know, that's kind of what bothers me with certain aspects of what it what it what it is. But it but that's what I also appreciate of it because it's dynamic. It's an expression, you know, I, it could be a sport and it's an expression, you know, it could be an art and it's an expression, you know, like it's all these things and that because it's not just that. And maybe it is at some point in your life or for one set of people and then maybe it's not. So we talked about a lot today. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Now I'm trying to kind of wrap my head around some of that, but it's. I don't it's, know, um, I would say that mm. see here's some stillness. This is a good test for everyone right now. <laughs> Just how long can you sit in this? <laughs> okay. I have to stop laughing. All right. But my urge to want to just say something to fill the silence is, is not going to aid right, the conversation, he, you know? I mean, I don't like, know how long we've been going. We could play like a one minute game thing. I mean, it's parkour world, man. Like when you have parkour vision, it's not just a physical thing. It's just, we use it a lot in our physical aspect. That's why we call it parkour vision. Like it's a hardware vision, you know, like a hard, hardcore parkour. But my point being is that the visionary aspect of envisioning yourself and in that moment or what it is, it, it, it trickles over, you know, and it can and should anyway. And I mean, we can pretend it's fine. Let's pretend for a minute we can be quiet. I don't think we could do it, though. I, I mean, we can do it. <laughs> I don't know if anyone wants to listen to that, but I get what, you what mean. I would say. Yeah, it's just, you know, I, I kind of got lost in some of that last bit about just what, um, See, so this is why we need to work on my listening. But like with the the idea of training being something that, you know, everyone no one really gives a shit like what you do and what you're like I don't really believe that. I don't mm-hmm. really believe that anyone really cares that you aren't good and, and all these thoughts that are in your head that yeah. if you're talking if you if you're finding oh, that you're like behind it. if okay. you're finding that you're like oh people are gonna think i'm not good at blank because i don't do this right there there's a huge clue right there for okay well there's so many things wrong with that first of all probably no one cares what you do <laughs> they probably shouldn't. like 
even if they did, yeah. why would you care what they right. think of you? What's right. important to you? You know, there's so much to dive into that with that. And that's like why I think that listening is so key, because yeah. if you think of even just one statement that's coming into your head and you can pick it apart, then you might find that there is four or five things, you know, that right. you need to address in that one thought. Um, that's certainly the way I've, you know, and and it takes lots of practice. I would say that much like I've still got so many thoughts that come through in my head yeah. that I wish I was over. I wish yeah. I was past this era of still, oh, I'm still like with your, with yeah. your, your childhood friend. Yeah. You're like, oh, I'm still holding on to that. Yeah. That still comes up. And yeah. especially when you don't have space to talk about it. Like we are in a society that uses, um, the word or the idea of being civilized and civilization and civilized, you know, like coming together, like that's a set of conditionings. Mm -hmm. And how do you know that's what you really need? And how do you know you can condition well with that? Like to be civilized is a set of conditionings. And so if you're doing that on top of still trying to learn yourself, right, that's like a un, un, an unsaid teacher, Right. You're mm -hmm. getting to know your friends, your environment, you're growing up. But there's a lot of lessons that you're learning that you can't a speak about and or even have time to learn to speak about because you got to keep moving or like to your point, you got to get better as an athlete. But now I'd never really got right at how to like in my example in the beginning, how to manage my money. Oh, yeah, I was doing all this great stuff. I was getting money and being sponsored and doing. Yeah. But then what did I do with the money? I don't know. <laughs> I mean, I don't have a house and all these pretty things that the money should have bought, but it wasn't that much money, apparently. You know, so my point is, if you never really worked on getting centered and understanding all these examples of the things around you that affect you, then you might continue to lose yourself. And maybe where you lost yourself in the conversation <laughs> to the point of, of uh, what we were talking about is that as an athlete or someone who performs well, um, you find that things don't trickle easily and then coming to your state of athleticism and greatness doesn't always have a one, two, three step. You know, just because you're great at it doesn't mean you can teach it well as much as you even know how you got there. You just do it. To me, wanting to know about those people in those examples, it doesn't mean they're going to have something in depth. You know, again, we said it, I said it earlier, you had some really great people on here. Tim was on here and all these other guys and you, the things that you guys spoke about, I could hear it in between it, you know. And some of them said, I don't know. I, I don't know, man. I just said, and I'm like, see that? That's, that's what I'm saying. They don't know. And then the world could be like, dude, that guy must have put in like a billion hours. Maybe. But after he put he or she, after they put in like Natalie, after they put in like a billion hours into something, it becomes a second, not even a second thought. It becomes oneness with them. So explaining it is almost lost to them now because they don't know how to define it anymore. It just is. It's just, it's just happening. And maybe they just say, it. I just, I just take a deep breath and I go, okay, that may not translate to everybody. Cause like, okay, I take a deep breath, but I'm still scared. Oh, I'm scared too. But yeah. how do you go? I, I just go. Well, and it's, it's an odd question to ask somebody, mm -hmm. right? Yep. Because in a way it's, if you're asking somebody to explain how they are them, if they're really expressing themselves, honestly, it's like, well, I don't know how I'm me. I don't know how to just be me. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I just be like, I, I try not to do anything. And that's one of the best ways to just not to be authentic and to be yourself. If you're asking how you can be me, you really can't, you know, like no. be you. That's you why know? it's good to <laughs> ask them in in the moment what were they who were they who oh, they yeah, believe yeah. No, they were that, in the moment yeah versus, in the moment you're like yeah. you're because we do have it's universal that these these things we can tap into yeah, right right and that's like what we're trying to get at but i think you know you'll you'll come up against resistance if we don't frame the questions properly yeah yeah and yeah, that yep, can yep, be yep, yep, something yep. that's that's one one thing i want to get better at for sure is just asking specific but also accurate you know well let's start with what you're saying questions. earlier about li getting better at listening mm -hmm. you know but it does start with asking the right questions yeah you and, know like, and that's with yourself too right 100 <laughs> yeah. and, and 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 
saying the right things to yourself like hey buddy you should really stop drinking let's say if that's a problem mm -hmm. you know or you should really stop eating this food you know or the the lack of you should get better with your health like those things we may need to say to ourselves but we don't say even though we might be saying you know we don't say it, we don't articulate it we don't say the words but it's an energy we know it to be right we might be getting again overweight and be like I'm not going to say it, but I do think I might. I'm not, I'm not going to finish that sentence. But you know what you're saying. <laughs> you know what you're saying. Yeah. And um, yeah, there's a thought. Then there's mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. speaking it into existence. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. then there's the, the hardest part, of it. which is acting yeah. on it yeah. and becoming maybe not the hardest part. But for, for a lot of us, I think it's the hardest part. Yeah. It, I mean, it is. It's, it's, it the, is. it's the part that counts the most. Though, it is. It's like doing something about it. Yep. And it's hard for people to say no. Can you, can you imagine that? Can oh. you imagine? No, of course not. No, I no. absolutely can. Are you kidding me? <laughs> I've, I've had my own issues with saying no. That, yeah. Right. So it, that's just a two-letter word. Mm -hmm. But you know the magnitude of it. But yeah. if they say no, then they're not going to. Right, win. right, right. So and we're forever evolving. You know, we're, I like to think that we're, um, we're plants. You know, we're just, we need sun and water and, you know that's it and stillness you know but we're all aiming for the the sun or you know whatever i'm just saying that there's a simplicity to us that we have brought so much complexity in our in our everyday life that we can get back to that we experience every day that it's not so hard to get back to and one of the best examples of getting there is for me right now is the stillness mm. of creating that space whether physically for two three four five minutes and then whatever mentally, but just the breath and that stillness. And then I do it like when I'm driving on the way to work. Obviously, I'm driving, so there's a sense of consciousness that's happening. I'm not just fading out or zoning out. But what I'm doing is just being still with my driving. My hands and feet are the only thing that are moving, and I'm just breathing. Mm. And I'm listening to news or whatever I'm doing, and I'm intentionally focused on my breathing as long as I can. I make it a game. Mm -hmm. So that when I'm in meditation, when I'm actually having to be still and I'm in the beginning where I couldn't be still for a minute or two, then I know that that practice connects and it correlates and it, you know, it, it, com it comes over because I did it in the car. I can do it here for five minutes if I did it for 30 minutes on the way to work. So, again, it connects. We, we are constantly growing. It's a journey. Um, you learn best from your mistakes that you admit to through wisdom. Um, but um let's talk about some of our mistakes all right Woo. let's let's finish with like maybe one there. big mistake each okay you want to go first i go first um mm. i can go first all right i the one that just shot out to my head mm. and this is like a big thing that we kind of been touching on i guess is just betraying or not listening to that that instinct that gut uh, maybe not instinct instinct can almost feel too primal maybe sometimes you need to ignore that instinct because yeah. that can be something that but if there's a for me the body if it's telling you something or if there's if there's an opportunity there's an opportunity almost every moment to yeah. make a choice towards a version of yourself that you can consciously kind of like go yeah i want to head that direction or this other way that maybe is a fear-based idea or, or something that like it'll be more comforting to to go there because yeah, you're afraid yeah. of this you're yeah. afraid of what might happen over here yeah and fear breeds comfort i think you know one of the biggest things i did when i was really young was just i explored alcohol and drugs and things mm -hmm. like in a way that was very very curious at first and then very very escapist and oh. very um Ooh very Ooh. just crutch border very line. crutchy oh, okay you know just mm. like okay here's my secret weapon yeah and i would say that you know if again mm. it was it was something i needed it was something i felt like i needed for a while but i think this is like a big one for me was just yeah that is i mean like that's heavy. thinking i needed something to be who i wanted to be yeah that was like and and alcohol became one of those things and everything became one of those things until i really found a lot more stillness in my life yeah. you know thinking i needed something outside of myself to become whoever i wanted like i'll do it when 
I'll mm-hmm. bid it when, but like you were saying, that puts this other version of you outside of yourself. That puts it takes some of you and says like, no, but there's a better thing out here from of, yep. of me. I'm yep. I'm not that. I'm this lesser thing, and there's this better thing out right. here. Right, and I can do better. But I can do better. Yeah. But uh, that'll be your biggest regret. I don't say it's a regret. I, mean, I don't the, I don't call it a regret, but I would think it was mistake. a mistake. Mm. Then like. I mean, just early as fuck on yeah. in life when I, I, I don't even know if it was the alcohol or the drugs, but there was like this moment. I'm really biting this mic right now. <laughs> there was this moment even like when I was like super young, uh, I was in like middle school or something. I think, Yeah. And I just like wanted to, let's say I wanted to talk to some girl, I think was one of the things. And like, I just, ah, I didn't. I didn't want to do it. Yeah. I, I wanted like someone else to break the ice for me or I wanted like something else to happen. Yeah. And I chose to like wait, you know, mm. and then that girl ended up having a huge crush on me anyways, but I missed uh. out because, because I, whatever, you know, like, or who knows what the fuck, <laughs> who knows what the fuck's happening. But like, it's just like those little things, but every that's time a regret to me, <laughs> what? that's a regret to me. That was a mistake. I don't, regret I, get it, it, I don't I get even it, remember who this girl was or her uh, name. Or anything. But you remember the moment. <laughs> you know what I remember is just uh. that feeling of, of choosing the weak, path i got you i, I, got I just you. that's what i i tap into and just like because I've, I've realized that that's really what i'm trying to eliminate in my life is like any of that resistance, yeah, yeah, yeah yeah any of that ability to to go oh okay i'll just let me just take this let me take this easier route for a second even though i know it's not easier in the long run no i i, I can get that well congratulations like really that you're on thing. the opposite side of well no i i i, I I think the one thing about it was just that kind of what you said, just recognizing it, Mm -hmm. you know, every time and then being able to say, okay, I'm not happy with that. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't know for me, um, it would be giving up, giving up around 32, 33, um, in a way so that in a way that I got depressed Mm. and I got really depressed with, my life and my movement and just what was happening around me um, and the, the life that I created. And there was some substance abuse in there f- for sure, like with rum mostly, not necessarily alcohol, but it is an alcoholic beverage. Um, mm-hmm. But it was just my attitude, how toxic I was to myself because of it. And because depression kind of makes you somewhat um, tolerant to certain levels of pain because no one knows your emotional pain, so I could take all this physical pain. <laughs> um, then, you know, I rode that wave for a while. And I wouldn't, I didn't translate it to like doing big things in my parkour and trying to hurt myself, but I did it in regards of like, I would wake up four or five in the morning and not go to bed until like three the next day. And not, I'm not taking any drugs to stay up, I'm just staying up. I'm just doing what I want to do. And if I have to sleep, I'll take a 30 second, 30 minute break and then I'll just keep going. Um, So I regret or I feel the biggest mistake was just giving up on myself and believing like I could find a medium ground and just dropping it all and getting real sad about everything and losing a big connection with my family and, you know, with the the parent I wanted to be at that time anyway. Mm -hmm. But um, to like anything, you know, you persevere through it. I got better. Um, I got help, you know, and then like meditation is my continued way. Eh, I, I like to say yoga, but I don't the physical practice of yoga for me is just fun. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't I think it's a good way to breed back prana into your body, the, the, the energy of life. But um, the stillness for me right now is the is the biggest approach to that. Then I can move because I've spent my life moving, mm-hmm. you know, to the intro having an open heart surgery. I mean, I died. I died. I was pronounced dead. Dang. And and who I am now and what happened to the operation and everything, I was known as the miracle baby. And they really didn't think I was going to live. They really thought like there was going to be some physical as much as a mental um, deficiency with me. And miraculously, no. But a lot of my internal world was shattered in in ways that growing up that I don't wish that the physical aspect was real more than the um, internal, but like I got used to giving up. And Mm -hmm. so around that time, that was like the last time I ever gave up on anything. And I just think that's like one of my biggest things that I really regret or don't, I'm not comfortable with 
was even though out of the things that I was doing that was great for myself, I still had a side of me that was um, very sad and depressed and ego driven and and again, just lost, mm. lost in the sense of self. And so um, I could have had some great friends, who knows, you know, but um, I don't. And I'm here now, <laughs> but it's cool. Well, it's flow. Oh yeah, no, we're no, getting, and, and you we're, know what I mean. Like we could have done great things together. I know, you know what you like, mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, man, that's yeah. a that's a beast. Thanks for sharing because not a problem. That's really tough, and yeah. like it's it's very vulnerable for you yeah. to admit that you know. Yeah, I stopped it, making it videos. Was a depression video and uh, not making, but and I was definitely I think really powerful because people need to know that you're gonna have to bounce back from that anyways, or you're just gonna feel shitty I, forever. I did, and, and I so didn't even know. Well that's what I didn't even know if I was. I was. I definitely knew what, that. What, did, what got you off of that that, that I depressive guess, state and back on uh, to a uh, um, to just kind of flip side because I don't want to end on the. I mean, it's not a negative. I guess. I've heard um, I mean, as simple as 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 my daughter, as much as um, parkour, just movement. Mm -hmm. um, I moved up here. 2012 i got certified with apex and kind of met the whole idea behind what apex was and then from 2014 when i officially moved here i just knew like i felt like this was a new life for me mm. and i didn't not fix the upper fix the depression and things that was prior to moving here i did fix them but i just didn't f feel like in the environment of atlanta that i could start over as cleanly as i could here mm -hmm. so coming here was like the the air and the environment was helping what I internally worked on in Atlanta um, for three years mm -hmm. because I had a divorce. I, you know, um, didn't get to see my daughters often and all these other realities. And still with my job, I walked away from a big career and all this um, financial support and was just like doing taxi work and do it on end coach jobs, you know, like just taxi being like Lyft and Uber. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then just like, you know doing like small end co coaching jobs for people around Atlanta because I'd build up such a buzz that when the word was mentioned at least, or in my opinion, because that's the way it felt when parkour or the idea of efficient parkour and outside conditioning came up, my name was associated mm -hmm. if not said directly. So it, it left me was like, Oh, you know what? If I could have just hone in and got with the idea of me being important to people as they're making me feel and form like a a, a a lesson plan or a school or a teaching or or a course then i could use that as a platform to continue connecting with these people but i got depressed and was like now nah, i'm out of here i don't want to do that anymore and then you know it's still now to be on tap there's julian does a good example of it but there's no big like example of where someone's going out in the name of parkour and speaking of the reality of it and, and using the environment outdoor to, because that's what we all want now. People are in the gym. So I've met people who've been in the gym all their life and never trained outside. <laughs> like that doesn't need, that's another dimension to me. What do you mean you've never trained? No, dude, there's stuff out there. Yeah, yeah. What do you think these things are made from an example of? But <laughs> it's, it's, it, it's not them. It, it's not in their, in their mindset, you know? And so when I got sad like that, it wasn't in my mindset to learn to free myself until when I came up here, I, I really tried to like ride your, your jock for a while. Like, Brandon, when can we train? When can we train? Hey, and, and you were in a world, dude. So it was like, I was like, he's not going to want to train with you. He's, he, you, know, you can't even do half the stuff he does. Well, maybe you can, but no one believes it. So fuck it, you know? So um, it was really just learning how to say like, okay, get better by yourself because you've done it before you don't live in the same space you do you do anymore you have good connections you worked out of that space now you have the opportunity to be better and then i just did and then all the other things and the new name that i have now under my instagram and social media life all is in part with that because it's me just growing and getting better with myself i tell my classes when i coach anyway that i don't want to be perceived as your coach or your teacher i want you to hopefully see me as somebody that disciplined enough and disciplined himself enough on something that they want to continue learning, you know, and you can get some examples from it as well, but this is what you can do for yourself. And I hope you can do this for your, you do do this for yourself because that's back to what we need. We need that self love and that self um, support and that self 
uh, belief that we can do whatever we want to do in love and in in support of ourselves, regardless of any self depleting actions or fear that we might have, you know, that came through some external reality. Yeah. 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 Thanks for saying. Yeah. Powerful stuff. Yeah, I'm going to be keeping on mine as much as I can. Are your ears ringing? My ears are ringing, bro. My ears are not. All right. Well, well. I can hear the fridge, but oh, I think that's a good place to wrap up. Like, yes, yes. That yes. was, um, powerful stuff man. thank you for you know? listening to hype drop yeah thanks for <laughs> thanks for being a part of this this was a yeah no topic. man i'm really no listen man let me shake your hand real quick no, for oh. sure, dude. it's like i it's really i really i really 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 appreciate this man like i really uh, um it love is. this Pleasure's podcast mine, and man. Like, put it on a pedestal bro so you're the only on one doing this I'm, I'm not in a negative way dude i mean just like <laughs> You got to pave. Somebody's got to pave the way, man. And for parkour specifically, um, this is awesome. This is a great example. Well, great I appreciate example. you saying so, man. I'm yeah. just doing whatever I feel like I can do yeah. just to be a part of it. And, you know, mine some of these these ideas that we're talking mm -hmm. about and hopefully share them with people. And, you know, partly that's one of my things that I've had to self-talk because, you know, it's easy for me to, to convince myself that, oh, I don't. Well, who's gonna listen to me? Why would anyone? Who gives a shit? Like, who am I? Just it could be a punk. There's yep, a thousand yep, podcasts yep. out there. You can punk out. What mm -hmm. doesn't? You know, and that's all an excuse yeah. to not. That's a, that's all that giving up. That's all that bullshit that you're yep. you're trying to convince yourself out of being who you know you could be or who you want to be, and and yeah. not even forget all that, but just ignoring the the power that you have and yeah. ignoring the ability that you have to actually help people's lives yeah you know if you if you don't believe that you can do that it might be because you have some limiting beliefs about yep. yourself you yep. know yeah and it's certainly easy to have them. and at least you that's be, a typically most people i know including myself uh -huh. we have those and we have to get through them we don't have like default like perfect beliefs right about right ourselves. right so well that's what i'm saying those are good tools and that's what it is those are good um totems or examples mm -hmm. of what you need to do or not do. Yeah. Yep. I appreciate you helping to remind me of uh, these drop. important things. We're going to drop it High now. Drop. Thanks, Howard. We'll see you guys on the next one. Thank you, one. Brennan. Peace. Bye, everybody. Thanks for listening.